Hi, this is Elson, and this episode is brought to you by Lag Studio. Did you know that you can make a living by playing games? That's how it's been for a lot of people in the Southeast Asia for the past few months. With the rise of Axie Infinity and other NFT games, players are able to earn from like $300 to $500 a month. It might not seem like a lot, but that may already be higher than their usual monthly w e NFT game market is currently valued at approximately $3 billion, with around 9.21 million GameFi users in this space. As more and more people start stepping into GameFi, organizations are starting to form to unite players and help them on their journey. And these organizations are called Game Guilds. Game guilds are nothing new, but unlike traditional gaming guilds, which are organized groups of players who play on a regular basis, crypto gaming guilds do not rise and fall with the game. Instead, they become a platform to support new gamers. That also explains why investors are making a big bet on crypto guilds. There are hundreds of crypto games hoping to become the next Axie Infinity. If games are like the home run, high risk, high reward punt, guilds would be the blue chip industry standing the test of time. So, high quality guilds will effectively become a top metaverse index for the best games available to players. So, there are a lot of guilds out there, but today we're going to focus on Yield Guild Games, also known as YGG. This is a Twitter page, they have quite a amount of followings on it. They are one of the earlier players in the industry that started in Southeast Asia and built their community upon the game Axie Infinity. Of course, right now they work with a bunch of other games. Recently, they raised around $4.6 million in a round led by A16Z with the other few venture capitalists. Shortly after that, they conducted a token sale that raised another $12 million. The token sale received a lot of backlash, though, since most of the supply was smoothed up in a matter of seconds by 32 wallet addresses. However, they will distribute the remaining supply to the community members. So, how does YGG actually work and what problems are they actually solving? This is a graph of their framework. They have a mother guild and sub guilds in the form of DAOs as their structure. The guilds participate in three main activities NFT game assets, game seed investments, and scholarship programs. And I'll go through them one by one. So, acquiring NFT assets is essentially like asset management for the guild. They manage different NFT assets in different metaverses, different games, and the value of these assets rise as these games become better and better. You can see that they have Axie Infinity, The Sandbox, F1 Delta, Splinterland, all of the big names, they have some type of exposure through owning the assets. The second activity is the guilds invest and support new game five projects. Good game by projects are core to the future of the guilds. A lot of the guilds, especially YGG, invest in up and coming projects in the form of simple agreement of future sales of tokens. This is a list of the games that they have invested in, and a lot of them have already g a v e them pretty good return, as you can see in this graph. So you can think of the Game Seed Investments branch as their investment branch. And right now, you have an asset management branch, an investment branch. So, the scholarship program is actually their operations branch to utilize their assets. This is also where most of the revenue of the guild comes from. They rent out the NFT assets that they acquired and let the players in different games, different sub DAOs, use these assets to generate income. The income is then split among the players, the community managers, and the guilds. In 70%, 20%, and 10%. Most of the 13 million revenue earned by the guild is through scholarship programs. The 10% the guild takes are mostly reinvested into the community to breed more NFTs. On top of those, YGG also has a lot of tokens that they've acquired from various sources of financing in liquidity pools. So that also generates some type of yield for them. So, in the graph, you see that there are sub DAOs and third party DAOs. So, what is a sub DAO? Sub DAO exists within the structure and is divided by games. They are formed by members to accumulate assets, strategy, and community of that specific game. You can think of this as a department in a company in charge of different regions or different branches of business. The sub DAOs each have their own token as well. Third party DAO is just DAOs that they've invested in that may be other guilds, It allows them to broaden their reach in different games and different regions. In terms of the problems they're solving, I think on the player side it's rather obvious. Through the utility of scholarship programs, players are able to play and earn without having to put a lot of upfront capital. Uh, Axie Infinity is an NFT based online game that is focused on breeding and battling players online. 
you have to own at least three axes to start playing the game and these axes could cost around 250 to 500 dollars on average if you're a good player with decent axes you could easily earn around 15 to 22 dollars so those figures may not seem like a lot, but in a lot of third world countries, $15 a day is more than the average daily wage for most of the people there. However, I think these guilds also provide good value to investors. These guilds are essentially asset management firms in the Web3 space, and the community members are fund managers with sufficient market knowledge of which games are good and have an actual team that can make money. The value added strategy is also executed within the guild through their members. Each sub DAO or sub guild also has their own specific strategy tailored for each game. So you could think of that as a fund having strategies for each asset type. More specifically, they're able to invest in specific games or activities within the guild through YGG's vault system. And of course, if they want exposure to all the games, they can invest in the super index vault. So for investors, crypto games and its assets do come with high volatility and risk, but YGG allows investors to gain exposure to a broad selection of Gain5 projects through investment through their entity. And they also have a proven track record to show that they can produce stable cash flow on the assets that they own. Who are the members in the guild and where do they come from? There's not a lot of data on the demographics of YGG's guild members, so I tried to do a little inductive reasoning through the data I could find. Here's a graph of blockchain game dominance by country. You could see that North America has a lot of traction as long as Europe, but South America, Southeast Asia, and some parts of Africa are also where blockchain games have been really dominating. So I to summarize the few traits that I think guild members might have. One is that they most likely would come from a country that have basic English ability. They might live in a country with the average hourly wage less than $15. Most likely that would be emerging economies. They maybe would come from countries with, with heavy inflation because then earning the currency over there wouldn't make that much of a sense. On top of that, it might be from people who can't afford NFT assets but want to play to earn money. And then last but not least, I think that they have to be in a country with good internet structure and common usage of mobile phones or desktops. And with those in mind, I also assume that the player geographic breakdown of Axie Infinity should be correlated to the members of YGG, since it's the most prominent game that they built upon. In a recent interview, Sky Mavis COO and co-founder Alexander Larson stated that around 55% of their players are from Philippines. And more generally, around 65 to 70% is from Southeast Asia region. I think America, 10%, and then the remaining 20 to 25% is from Europe and Africa. So this also aligns with the traits that we've defined before. And so after that, I came up with an estimate that probably 75% of YGG's members should come from Southeast Asia, with the top three countries being Philippines, Indonesia, and Thailand and probably 5% comes from South America, with Venezuela and Brazil being one of the more dominant countries. And then the rest would be from North America, Europe, Africa, and other countries. In terms of age, 64% of crypto users fall in the age of 18 to 34, and also 50% of the video gamers also fall in that same age range. So I would assume that the majority of YGG's guild members would also be 18 to 34. So we covered the macro, let's look at the competition in the space. These are the top five gaming guilds out there that I've tried to gather information on. And it's worth noting that YGG actually invested in Merit Circle to broaden their reach and educate the market. The five biggest guilds accumulate for only 420k members on Discord. So with 9.2 million NFT game users, there's a lot of room for growth for existing guilds and new guilds to form. So it's gonna be really exciting, especially with so much funding they have, each guild's long-term vision may be different. One may want to be asset management firm in the space, and GuildFi, I think they wanted to be the steam of future Web3 games. It would be really interesting to see what each of them evolve into as time progresses. The amount of crypto game players and the amount of people in the game guilds are really disproportioned, but while not everyone needs to be part of a guild, I can see more and more people being incentivized to join one as guilds provide more utility. That means that there's a huge market potential for game guilds. Crypto games currently focus more on the DeFi aspect rather than the actual game elements. So this results in people treating the games as jobs and the high retention rates do support that claim. 
However, if the games don't actually have enough gameplay aspect to build long lasting communities, it will eventually die out while earnings per users go down. The game guilds will be the perfect instrument to hold and transition players from game to game. Especially if you look at the second point over here, with these type of systems, you could see that the players can record their progress within the guild rather than just in the game. But then this would also mean that game guilds will need to evaluate projects from multiple aspects, and it'll be interesting to see how YGG and other guilds pick their next projects that they want to be part of. We can also see that due to this nature, uh, regions with lower income benefit greatly from play to earn games. With Southeast Asia being where the majority of the players are, I think that South America, India, and especially Africa all have huge potential to form large guilds. As always, like, subscribe, comment. If you have any projects you want me to dig into, please feel free to reach out to me through Twitter or leave a comment on YouTube. Stay excited, stay safe, peace.